Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is the second video in the series on using the Nano VNA. The first one was all about walking through the menu and explaining the major things that you would be interested in. In this and subsequent videos, I plan on moving to the more and more complex measurements as the series progresses. In this video, I'm going to be taking the first and simplest measurement we might be interested in making with the Nano VNA. I will be measuring the SWR of a 40 meter inverted V antenna as seen by the transmitter in the radio shack. The Nano VNA that I will be using is a Nano VNA V2 plus 4 with firmware version 2021127. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and, well, don't forget to subscribe. Now, you can either set up what you want to see on the screen first or the frequencies for the test in any order. I'm going to set up the frequencies for the test first. Well, the US 40 meter band runs from 7.0 megahertz to 7.3 megahertz. Now, because I know the start and stop frequencies of the band, I will specify the stimulus for the test using the start and stop frequencies. I tap on the middle of the screen to bring up the main menu. Then I tap on the stimulus option. Now, here's an important note. As I said in the previous video, the Nano VNA will not allow you to set a start frequency which is greater than the stop frequency. With 7 MHz being well below the currently set stop frequency, I tap on the start, enter 7.0, and tap on the M for MHz. Done. I tap on the middle of the screen to bring up the menu again. I then tap on stop. I enter 7.3, and tap on the M. Done. We are now ready to set up what we see on the screen. I tap on the middle of the screen to bring up the menu again. I tap on the back menu item to go back to the main menu. Well, I'm only interested in seeing the SWR and nothing else. So I want to turn off every trace but one and then configure that one remaining trace to display SWR. So let's begin by turning off every trace but one. We are at the main menu. We tap on the display menu item. We have to go one deeper. Tap on the trace item on the display menu. You now see a menu with five entries on it. Trace zero, trace one, trace two, trace three, and back. You can see that every entry is in living color. Now, this means that all four traces are active. We choose one of these to be the trace we want and turn all of the other three off. I am going to choose trace zero and turn the rest off. I tap on the back entry to return to the display menu. The next step is to choose the channel for this trace and this measurement. With the Nano VNA, SWR is always measured on channel 0. On higher level VNAs, this is referred to as port 1. So I tap on the channel menu item and then select channel 0 reflect from the channel menu. Now we want to select the measurement type. This is found in the format menu. I tap in the middle of the screen to bring up the menu again. I tap on the format menu item. We are faced with a whole list of items. I tap on the SWR entry, well, because this is what I'm going to be measuring. You will now notice that the screen looks a lot less cluttered and that the frequencies indicated are from 7.0 to 7.3 megahertz. Now we get to prepare for our measurement. Our first step is to get everything in place to connect our VNA to the point of interest, the end of the coax coming from the antenna. Now we have a double challenge here because the Nano VNA has SMA connectors 
and the antenna coax has a PL259 connector. Now, as a note, the PL259 and SO239 connectors are known in the RF world as UHF connectors. They were originally called that back in the 1930s when 30 megahertz was considered UHF. From here, I will simply refer to these connectors as UHF connectors. Okay, back to our setup. We have to ask ourselves, what sort of termination do my calibration standards have? And the companion question, how and where am I going to calibrate? The object is to set things up so that we calibrate the VNA as close to the place where we're going to connect to the thing that we're testing as possible. Now, I have two sets of standards. The first is with SMA connectors. These came with the Nano VNA. The SMA standards are all male connectors with the exception of the through standard, which is a female to female connector. The second is with N-type connectors. The N-type standards have both male and female standards to use. Now, this gives me three scenarios to choose from, as you can see here. The first adds just a single adapter after calibration, which converts the N to a UHF connection. The second removes the SMA female-to-female -female through adapter and then adds an SMA to UHF and then a female-to-female -female UHF adapter. The third calibrates at the Nano VNA's channel zero connector. That sounds good. But then it adds an SMA to BNC and then a BNC to UHF adapter. The first scenario introduces the least amount of change after calibration, so this is the one that I will choose. I will calibrate the Nano VNA at the end of the N-type female-to-female adapter using my male N-type calibration standards. Then I will add the N-type to UHF adapter. At this point, I could choose to add a port extension known in the Nano VNA world as electrical delay to move the calibration plane to the end of the added adapter. However, for what we're doing here, this would make no real difference, so I'm not going to do it here. Now, we're ready to calibrate. Let's do this thing. I tap on the display to bring up the menu. Select the back menu item as many times as needed to return to the main menu. I tap on the calibrate menu item to go to the calibrate menu. I tap on the next calibrate menu item at the top. Here I see the three that we're interested in for this measurement. Open, short, and load. The first thing I do is attach the open standard to the end of my test cable. This test standard is quite literally a connector with no connection at all, and open. Then I tap on the open menu item. When it is done doing its thing, I remove the open and attach the short. This short standard, as expected, is a connector with a dead short across it. Then I tap on the short menu item. When it's done doing its thing, I remove the short standard and replace it with the load standard. In this context, this is a precise, non-inductive, very low capacitive 50 ohm load. Then I tap on the load menu item. When it is done doing its thing, the required calibration for this measurement is complete. I remove the load standard. I tap on the done menu item. We are now ushered to the menu where we can save our calibration and setup data for use at another time. Now, I'm not interested in saving this calibration data because, well, this is a one-off kind of setup and measurement. If you are going to be using this physical setup exactly as it is again, you could save it by tapping on the save option. When you tap on the save option, you save a lot more than just the calibration data. It also saves the frequency range, trace settings, marker settings, 
among other things. Now, you can also get at this save menu from the top level calibration menu. Now, in my case, and for this measurement, I will simply tap on the back menu item to go back to the main menu. I tap in the middle of the screen to get rid of the menu. Now, let's go make the measurement. My next step is to install the end to UHF adapter. I now connect the end of the coax coming from the antenna to this adapter and to the VNA. You can tell by watching the trace that it is a very windy day outside. The Nano VNA is already sweeping away making measurements. The results are seen on the screen. Suppose that I'm interested in the SWR at a particular frequency, say 7.25 MHz. This is where markers come in. I am going to define one marker for this purpose. Tap on the screen to bring up the menu. Tap on the back menu item as needed to bring us back to the main menu. Tap on the marker menu item on the main menu. I am going to keep this simple and just turn on one marker. I tap on the select marker menu item then on the Marker 1 menu item to turn on Marker 1 if it is not already on. I tap on the middle of the screen to dismiss the menu. You can now see a little numbered triangle on the screen right on our SWR trace. Using your stylus, you can drag this marker to the frequency of interest. Now remember, when you drag this marker, you must draw along the line of the trace just like you're drawing the line of the trace. You will find color-coded text at the top of the display. The color of this text is the same as the trace the data is associated with. Just to the right of this is the value of the measurement at the selected frequency. The frequency that the marker is sitting at is also displayed at the top of the display. Now I'm going to drag my marker over to 7.25 MHz to see what the SWR is at that frequency. In my case, the SWR is 1.34 to 1 at 7.25 MHz. Now let's see what it looks like at the bottom of the band at 7.0 MHz. It looks like the SWR is about 2.5 to 1, but it's bouncing around because of the windiness outside. So there you go. We've measured the SWR of an antenna intended for use in the 7.0 to 7.3 megahertz amateur radio band. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.